Happy Lord's Day, everyone. This is a pretty unique situation for us that we find ourselves in. We're kind of in the sanctuary with just a handful of people. And uh, obviously you guys are in your homes. I never imagined that we, ever, that we would ever have church uh, in a circumstance like this. But what's so encouraging to me is that even though there's a distance between us, we are one in the spirit. We are the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is all over the globe and all over the city. And in the next few moments, God is going to make us one. My prayer is that today, whether you're in your apartment or in your home or you're just kind of um, taking the service in from a unique place, my prayer is that wherever you are would become a sanctuary. Isn't it awesome to know that as we worship the Lord and seek the Lord together, he is one with us by the Holy Spirit. We become one with him. So there's a couple of things that we want to do. First of all, this is kind of offering time for us. And I want to encourage you to give today. We have a couple of different ways that you can give. You can go online or you can text Chicago Tab to 77977 to give. And would you please be sure to give to the Lord during this season? Because the church needs to be stronger than ever as we respond to what's happening, this, this global crisis. I uh, had the privilege of talking to the alderman, and I let him know that Chicago Tabernacle is here to serve our community, and he said that he would be sure to call me um, as things unfold, because we want to be ready to respond, and I hope you say amen to that in your home. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, and we want to worship the Lord as we give. So I'm going to pray about that in a moment. I also want to point out that our president has declared today a national day of prayer. And I'm so glad that he's done that. He's calling upon our whole nation to pray for God's intervention in our global crisis. COVID-19 is basically bringing the whole globe to a halt but hallelujah, by his mighty power, Jesus is able to put this coron uh, a coronavirus to an end. And we're going to pray that right now. We're going to touch and agree and ask the Lord to step in and to bring this virus to an end. They're saying that this is going to take a while, but I believe that God is going to shorten it by his mighty power. So let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we unite as the people of God, and we thank you, Lord, that you are willing and able by your mighty power to, to spread your grace all over the globe, oh God, and to release your power all over the globe and bring an end to COVID-19. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, we touch and we agree, Lord, that you are bringing this virus to an end. Eradicate it by your mighty power, God, we pray. And Lord, let our lives go back, oh God, to normal with the exception that, Lord, we will praise you more and give you more glory than ever before because we know we called upon your name and you stepped in and you delivered your people. Bless the world. Bless every country, Lord. Bless every city. Bless every home with your peace and with your glory. I especially pray for those who are experiencing anxiety or for those that might be sick right now. In the name of Jesus, stretch out your powerful hand and bring peace and healing. We touch and agree on that right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, because we love you, we take this opportunity to worship you with our tithes and our offerings. And Lord, we know that you watch every time we give to you. Lord, and we do it because we want to please you. But Lord, we pray for a special blessing upon this offering. And Lord, I pray for all churches, Lord, that will be 
uh, taking an offering in this same, in a similar type of uh, circumstance. God, I pray that your people would rise up and, and meet the challenge of this occasion. I pray that your people would make the church stronger than ever before through deep and sincere worship. And I ask that you would multiply, Lord, every offering that's given. And I ask that you would bless your people. Lord, bless them because your word promises that if we give, it shall be given, pressed down, shaken together, running over, poured into our laps. So would you pour a blessing into everyone's lap right now, my, my heavenly Father. By your mighty power, bless your people. Bless their homes. Bless apartments. God, bless people who might be in their car or, or, or even on a lunch break. Lord, in the name of Jesus, would you bless all your people and would you provide by your mighty power in your mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I want you to know I really, really miss you because I'm missing the amens. But let's get to the word of God. And we are continuing on the original plan uh, series. And we've learned thus far that the Lord planned for us to be fruitful and to multiply. I believe in the darkest of times, in the most difficult of days, God is able to make his people shine. He's able to make us fruitful and multiply for his glory. And providentially, I feel like today's topic really suits the uniqueness of our circumstances. Because today, we're not gathered together, uh, uh, physically speaking, but we're actually in our homes. Today, we're having church right from our home. And in a few moments, I'm going to be reading about the fact that God began everything and started everything with one unique and individual home. And we were supposed to be blessed by that home and that our homes were also supposed to be a blessing to everyone we're connected to and to everyone that we uh, are associated with. It was God's will that the first home and every home after that, that it would be blessed with fruitfulness and expansion. So we're going to pick up here when God formed the first home. We're going to read in Genesis chapter 2. But I want to say this. We're not just reading in the Old Testament today. We're also reading in the New Testament from the book of Ephesians because when God formed the first home, it had a built-in mystery. And the New Testament talks about this built-in mystery that was supposed to be an incredible uh, blessing and a very amazing symbol for all of us to be blessed by. So Genesis chapter 2, beginning with verse 18. The Lord God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them, and whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. 
Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Now let's jump to the book of Ephesians, which picks up on this thought and enlarges the principle of the first home into a very powerful mystery that God wants to use to impact the whole globe. So Ephesians 5, 31 and 32 says this, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a, that's a direct quote. And then here it is. It says, this is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. It's a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. The title of today's message is The Original Home. The first home and all of our homes were designed from the very beginning to be the main building block of all of our relationships. But our homes were supposed to be blessed in such a way that it would spread and it would impact all of our communities so that the church of Jesus Christ would grow and so that Jesus would be magnified and glorified. Now, the original home, which was a husband and a wife placed together, is something that has been seen and recognized throughout all history, in every culture, in all societies. In fact, a current professor at the University of Chicago said it this way, I have studied ancient human cultures for over 30 years. One conclusion is inevitable. Marriage between a man and a woman was the foundation of all human societies. The reason being was this. God designed all human beings to live in community and to experience oneness in varying degrees. God always wanted it to be that way. And this is a very mysterious and powerful phenomenon of two becoming one. In other words, there's a reason why we love to be on a team. There's a reason why we love to have moments when, when uh, our uncle comes over or our auntie comes over. There's a reason why we love having grandmas and, and grandpas. It's because we were made for community. It's God's will and God's way that we would experience oneness. Now, the most ultimate oneness, which is between a husband and a wife, that was the foundational building block. That has a unique level of intimacy, but in varying degrees, all of us were made to be in relationship and to have a sense of community. This is why Christ gave the church. The church of Jesus Christ is meant to be part, is meant to create a global community of the children of God. No one should ever feel alone because Christ has created the church for regardless of where someone finds themselves in their journey, they have a place. In other words, let me put it this way. Christ and the church are God's shelter for those who are longing for oneness. You might be watching today and, and uh, someone told you to, to tune in and you find yourself and you feel alone. Well, you don't have to be alone because Jesus is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And when you make peace with Jesus and when you start a relationship with Jesus, you not only have access, incredible, unfettered access. In fact, he comes and lives inside of your heart. But not only do you have access to Jesus, then you also have access to the people of God, to his church. And that's what's so beautiful. That's what I miss about us not being together today. I miss the fact that we can't be worshiping together and encouraging one another because it's God's will for us to live in powerful community, a community where we strengthen one another and help one another and encourage one another. Part of the purpose of the church 
is that even though we live in a fallen world, even though we live in a very antagonistic world, people are always fighting and backbiting. Jesus has created his church so that there's always a shelter that anyone and everyone can run to. I love how mixed our church is. I love the fact that we have people who come from all walks of life, from every tribe, from every tongue. And I love that people become friends that they would have never been friends. One of the things that is amazing to my wife and I is that there are so many people that we would never know unless we knew Jesus. And Jesus, when you're born again, Jesus places you in a powerful and amazing community so that we could experience oneness. It is God's will for us to always have a deep sense of oneness. Oneness with God and then oneness with each other. Now, I want to take... Um, the rest of the time of this message to really unpack oneness because there are all sorts of um, ramifications to what oneness really means. Remember, we've been made in the image of God. So oneness has to be lived out um, in a way that honors the image of God. Our oneness should bring great glory to Jesus in our homes in our, our families first, and then in all of our relationships. Now, I want you to know that I want to say, everybody say amen. But you're not here, so just say amen in your house for me, okay? Amen. All righty. So, let's, let's look at the original home. The original home began with the gift of oneness. God said, it's not good that man should be alone and I will make him a, a suitable helper. In other words, Eve was created to complement Adam and Adam complimented Eve and they were better together. I mentioned this earlier Husband and the, uh, a husband and a wife, their level of intimacy is the highest form of human oneness. But the principle of oneness speaks to the fact that when we are in community, we are better together than when we are alone. Let me say that one more time. When we are in community, we're better together than when we are alone. And it's important for us to understand this powerful dynamic. Adam and Eve complemented each other. Oneness between a husband and a wife is, first of all, spiritual. Then secondarily, it's emotional. And then thirdly, it's physical. Obviously, sexual oneness is only for a husband and a wife, but, and, and the two become one flesh. We know that the Bible teaches that sexual in intimacy, when it honors God and glorifies God, when it's healthy and good and right, it's just for one man, one woman, who uh, have uh, uh, joined themselves in the holy bond of matrimony. But that oneness then spills out. Now, I do want to say this. Okay, I do want to say this. I think it's, it's an appropriate time, even though this message is not kind of a, quote, a marriage message. But we are at the root of our, of our core being. We are spiritual. Okay? And so when we connect with people, when you go to choose a spouse, you need to be in sync spiritually. Okay, and then the next thing is after you know, hey, this is why we say date a believer. There's no such thing as evangelistic dating. The Bible says don't be unequally yoked. We can love unbelievers, but we shouldn't, we shouldn't decide that we want to build a life together with someone who is not on the same page spiritually with us. Okay, so oneness between a husband and a wife is first of all spiritual, and then secondarily, it's emotional. 
This is the way a relationship progresses. You pick, you, you decide to become friends with someone of the opposite sex, and you say, okay, that person loves God in the same way I do, and then you start to form a friendship. You form a bond, and then you, you come to the place where you realize that there is a deep emotional connection. When you have a spiritual sense of oneness and a, an agreement and unity, and then you have that emotional connection, uh, then you can go ahead, you, you get counseling, premarital counseling, you get married, and then after you get married, there's the physical oneness. What the world does is they actually reverse the order. The world starts with just physical attraction, and a lot of times it doesn't get any past physical attraction. When we choose to do this, there is no real complementing of one another, and it only causes hurt and pain. So one of the things I want to do is kind of unfold this powerful journey of oneness. It's spiritual, emotional, and then physical. Now, this marriage was supposed to be between two people that would complement one another, and that meant that they were not the same. Okay? We shouldn't marry people who are exactly like us. Actually, we marry people. We think when we first get married that we're exactly alike, but it never is like that. Once you actually get married, you discover, oh, we are not alike. And here's why. It's because we complement each other. The space here is filled by the other person, and we meet and we complement. Everybody knows who... Uh, Babe Ruth is. Babe Ruth was the reigning home run king in the big leagues until Hank Aaron came along and broke his record. And then uh, Barry Bonds, but that record is a little bit dicey and sketchy. Another different sermon. Um, but I want you to think about it this way, okay? Because everyone needs community for the purpose of being complimented. No one has everything. No one has, has all the gifts, all the talents, and so we need people because people complement us. Our family is meant to complement us in the same way Eve complimented Adam and Adam complimented Eve. So think about it this way. Imagine Babe Ruth, the greatest home run king, imagine putting Babe Ruth at every position. If you know Babe Ruth, he was, yes, he was a home run king, but he, was, uh, he ran pretty slow. He was left-handed. And if you tried to put the greatest home run hitter in every position, then chances are you would have a pretty crummy team. Because even though he may be able to hit home runs or play the outfield, no one can play every position. No one can play every position. Even, in, even today, some people sang, some people... Uh, uh, played the, one person played the bass, another person played the keyboard, someone played the guitar. We work together and beautiful things come about, but when we try to live alone, we miss out on the blessings and the power of oneness. Oneness is a remarkable and incredible gift. And that oneness should take place in our homes first. You know that the people in your life are meant to be gifts from God. If you're married here today, it doesn't matter where you find your marriage. I'm talking about the original plan. If you're married here today, you just need to know that it is God's will that you and your wife would experience incredible oneness. And we need to move our hearts and, and alter our attitudes so that we could experience that gift. God wants our homes and our friendship and our church to be a place where we see people as a gift and we love them and we pursue oneness with them. It's such an unwise thing, guys, to miss out on the blessing of the people that God has put in our lives. And look, you know when someone puts a person in your life that ought to be there, 
Um, and then, you know, sometimes God puts people, that, sometimes people are come into your life that God didn't put there. And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the gift of the blessing of God when God wants to put people in our lives so that we could experience what it means to share and to be blessed. A couple of other things I want to say about oneness is that it is impossible to have true oneness without light, truth, and love. Okay? So, oneness of spirit is broken if we live together without light, truth, and love. For example, the Bible says that they were naked and not ashamed. You see, in the original home, it was a place of light. Everything that was done was done in the light. Now, whether you're married or whether you just have friends, it is not a healthy marriage and it's not a healthy friendship if things are taking place in the dark. You see? And you can say that you feel close to someone, but it's not true biblical kingdom oneness if you're not in the light. The light, be living your relationships in the light is one of the ways that you know that you're really pursuing and, and have access to the oneness that God uh, uh, planned for your life. So, so if it's not in the light, if you have to have a secret relationship, well, guess what? That's not oneness. That's not oneness. God is light in him. There's no darkness at all. We have, a, a, we have our own version of things, but those, those things won't bless us if we don't do it God's way. So, first there's light. Then there's truth. People try to define marriage. They try to define the home. They try to define relationships. They try to define all sorts of things. But the bottom line is the word of God is the way, the truth, and the life. You see? And the Bible tells us how we're supposed to live together. The word of God sets the standards for what's good for us and for what's not good for us. And so we need the truth. Jesus is the way the truth, and the life. And when we have the light and when we have the truth, then we could really be connected to people. Remember, God made us as spirit beings and the core of oneness is always spiritual first. And so we need light, we need truth, and then lastly, oneness requires love. Without love, that's broken. Our children need love. Our friends need love. You know what Chicago needs? Chicago needs love. Our neighbors need love. Our coworkers need love. If you're a teacher here, your students need love. You know, everyone remembers the loving teachers. They remember the mean teachers too, but, but everyone remembers when a teacher was full of love because of the impact that they had and God's will is that we would build oneness through light and truth and love. And so the original home began with the gift of oneness. And my prayer is that we would understand how powerful uh, um, oneness is meant to be. Right now, you might be in your home with your spouse or with your children. And when we're done when we're done with this message and we go to pray, just realize that the Lord wants to rush in and put a powerful blessing upon you and your family, upon you and your friends. Even use your home. I'll never forget when I first became a, a Christian, walking into Christian homes. Walking into Christian homes blew me away because I could feel the difference between how I grew up and a sense of peace that resides in every Christian home. Every Christian home here is meant to be a place, a place of peace and love. 
That's God's will. We're the church of Jesus Christ. Wherever we are, how many know Jesus is there too? And so there should be this powerful sense of the presence of God and the peace of God. And all of that comes when we have light and truth and love. It is a gift. Oneness is a gift. And, and before I move on, let me just say this. Get a clear sense of who God wants you to be in relationship with. And remember that they're supposed to be a gift to you. And you're supposed to be a gift to them. As we were preparing, one of the things that I prayed is that relationships would be healed. Because someone would take a step of faith and say, you know what? I want to become one with my brother again. I want to become one with my sister again. You know, even if it means that I have to forgive them, even if it means that I got to call them and I got to take the first step, the original home was meant to impact relationships and communities and the whole globe. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ in the church. Our home is supposed to be a powerful example of the church of Jesus Christ. I'm gonna amen myself for that. Then secondly, secondly, the original home was the vehicle for transferring oneness. Okay, so oneness was a gift for the home. You're going to see how this fits together. But then the original home was the vehicle for transferring oneness. Oneness began as a gift that was meant to emanate. It was meant to emanate. It meant that God was going to start with two people, and then the two people would have children, and then they would build a community, and those children would carry that sense of oneness. Here's what this fundamentally uh, uh, looks like. So from the very beginning, this was God's plan. God's plan that a man and a woman would unite. That man and that woman would have children. Those children would be profoundly impacted by the oneness of that marriage. Those children would see how much dad loves mom. Those children would see how much mom loves dad. And as they saw that and as they grew under that, as they experienced that, they would have a built-in confidence. Oneness kind of emanates. It kind of transfers. And then they, these, these brothers and sisters, would go out into the world and they too would form friendships and relationships. And then it would spread. Meaning we're called to raise up kids who experience homes that are full of amazing and powerful oneness. And as they take that oneness outside, as they take it to school, as they take it to, uh, uh, to the playground, people can see, oh my goodness, what is, a, what, what is it about this child that is so confident and so sure and so full of love and joy and peace? Oneness is meant to emanate. Look at the way Francis Schaeffer put it. Francis Schaeffer said this, our relationships with each other is the criterion the world uses to judge wh whether our message is truthful. Christian community is the final apologetic, and by apologetic it means the defense of the gospel. The way love and joy and peace emanates from our home is the absolute final witness of who Jesus really is. I believe, and I, you know what, I would put it this way. When I came to the church, when I saw marriages in the church, it did something for me. When I saw community in the church, it did something for me. The way people loved each other let me know that Jesus was real. The way you love your family and then the way that love carries and spills out. In other words, love was meant to spill out. The original home was meant to spill out. 
God wants your home to spill out into your, you could be in an apartment building, your apartment, the love, the life, the joy, the blessing in that home should be spilling out. It should spill out in your neighborhood. It should spill out onto your job. It should spill out everywhere. Imagine these days what people are feeling who don't have Jesus. Okay, imagine the opportunity that we have to bring our oneness with Christ to all of the people that we meet in the days ahead. Whether it be in school or whether it be in an office building, God desires for us to be one. You know, as we go to close, I just think about how easy it is for us to have fractured relationships. It's so easy for us to get offended by people it's so easy for us to fight with people, to be separated. Meanwhile, it was God's will from the very beginning to make our homes places of unity, places of love, places of blessing. Perhaps, perhaps it was God's will for this message to land on a day when we would find ourselves actually where we live. Perhaps. By the, by the mystery and the providence of God. It was his desire that you would take in this message from the comfort of your own home so that you could experience the Spirit of God flood your home right now. So that you could experience the grace of God come and bring healing to very important relationships. Maybe you don't have a good relationship today with one of your children. In the name of Jesus, God wants to bring healing and restoration. In the name of Jesus, God wants to restore marriages. And God wants something to emanate. He wants something to emanate, to radiate out of your home that people would be inspired, that people would become curious and say, I don't know how to describe it but there's something special and different about you and your family, and I wish I had some of that. I'm gonna ask the singers to come. Wherever you find yourself today, we're gonna do this kind of in stages. First of all, I want you to lift your hands, and if there's hurt, if there's pain, maybe you feel loneliness right now, I want you to open your heart up and say, Lord, I'm ready to receive to be at one with you, God. I'm ready to lay down my hurt. I'm ready to lay down my pain. I'm ready, Lord, for you to come by your spirit and heal me. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that healing, oh God. Lord, before we pray for this virus, I pray for the healing of hearts and minds and emotions, oh God. I pray, God, that you would make us one in you. It's not your will that we would be broken into a million pieces. It's not your will, oh God, that we would feel isolated and lonely and rejected. God, we come against every lie right now that would tell people that they are rejected. No one is rejected by you, Lord Jesus. And if we have relationship with you, Lord, we can be whole, we can be one. So I pray, Lord, for everyone to be at peace with you. I pray that they would invite peace with you, Lord. If someone has never accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray that right now, Lord, that they would invite you into their heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, let people be born again right now. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus, all you have to do is say, Lord, come into my heart. I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God. And I ask you to come in to forgive me, to cleanse me. And Lord, I receive you as my Lord and my King. Sit on the throne of my heart and be my King and my Lord and my Savior, my friend forever and ever. Amen. And if you prayed that right now, you are born again. 
you will never be alone ever, ever again, for Christ will be with you. But remember, He makes us one so that we could then become one with other people. God wants to pour out healing and love and oneness to every family. And we join together right now. And we say in the name of Jesus, blanket every household represented with the oneness of Christ. Where there's bitterness, wash it away. Where there's anger, wash it away. God, where there's hurt and pain, God, would you wash it away by your mighty power. I pray that this would be a day of forgiveness. I pray that this would be a day, Lord, that instead of there being silence, I pray that talking would begin again and laughing would begin again, oh God, and singing and rejoicing would begin again, Lord God. It's possible because of you, Lord Jesus. So flood every home right now with the gift of oneness. And then, Lord, make every home transfer oneness. Let oneness emanate, Lord, in apartment buildings. Let oneness emanate in neighborhoods. Let it emanate, Lord God, from condominiums, oh God, from cars, Lord. Let it emanate, Lord God, even from a, a, a desk and an office, Lord Jesus. Let the whole world know Lord, that you love your people and that the church and that Jesus are a shelter for them. Do it by your mighty power. Blessed be your name. And we want to worship the Lord together just for a few moments. And then we'll close in prayer. Singers, could you help me? I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation i will put my trust in you
And God, I pray that our oneness will, with you would make us a gift to one another. I pray that our oneness with you, Lord, would spill out and emanate wherever we go, Lord Jesus. I pray that families would be restored and built up and then used like never before during this season. God, at this time where people are feeling fearful and afraid, may the body of Christ rise up, oh God and be the evidence and the example of your love and your peace and your joy and your power. Send us out this week, Lord God. Send us out to be agents of love and joy and peace. Help us, oh God, to wrap spiritual arms around people. Help us to open our arms wide, Lord God, spiritually so that people could find shelter in you. So we ask not only that you would bless, Lord, every home that you would bless this day, but Father, I pray that as the days unfold, whether the news is good or bad, help us, Lord, to be such difference makers wherever we find ourselves. Let the mystery of Christ and his church be revealed all over Chicago land. Let the mystery of Christ and his church be revealed all over the United States, all over the globe, my God. The beauty, oh God, that we can be one with you and one with each other. Bless, oh God, all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. Have an amazing day and an amazing week.